Hi folks, Mike Schramke with Larry Stove Sand Equipment, America's largest selling coyote dealer. So you're going to buy a tractor and you're wondering how to get it from here to there or to your mother-in-law's property or taking it in for service or just being able to have the machine be mobile because your friends are going to want to borrow it. It needs to occasionally get from point A to point B. So if you don't have a lot of experience towing something like that, it's okay. And that's what this video is about. What I'd, what I'd like to do is take a tractor and, uh, and a trailer and show you how, you know, for example, the basics, how I pull it on, how I uh, distribute the weight, make sure that the uh, trailer is at a good level uh, position, how I strap it down, the things I look for, a little bit about safety, a little bit about, you know, things to check. And you can decide. It's, it's not difficult and it shouldn't be intimidating. And hopefully, uh, you know, by watching this video, if, if you have not a lot of experience, that, you know, maybe you could garner some confidence. When uh, a lot of times when we sell a tractor, it, it very, very well may be the first tractor that someone's ever owned. And perhaps they buy it as a package and, and it has a trailer. Uh, you know, if the folks come here to pick it up, we, we like to load it with them and show them what we're looking for as far as weight distribution, how to strap things down, all that stuff. And uh, if we deliver the tractor on the trailer that the customer bought. The same thing. We, we like to spend a minute before we take everything off to show them what we did and how we find uh, the loading and, and, you know, retention of the tractor to the trailer, how we find, you know, safety and success. And uh, so let's take a look. Let, let's, let's go through it. Let's walk through it and uh, see how you feel afterwards. Okay, right off the bat, contrary to popular opinion, using and reading the owner's manual that was supplied with the tractor, your tow vehicle, perhaps the trailer, doesn't cause COVID. It won't make you miss sleep. It, it's actually a good thing. There's a plethora of important information in your owner's manual. The first thing you're going to need to know is well, they're going to need to know a lot of things, and they're all about numbers. You need to know wh how much weight you'll be carrying. So the weight of the tractor, did you fill the tires, and uh, the weight of whatever implement you're going to take along, and add those numbers up. You need to know if your trailer, you know, and the trailer has limitations, and the limitations are easy to find. The, uh, the GVWR, which stands for Gross Vehicle Weight Rating, is uh, right on the stamp that's uh, generally in the front of the trailer. It's always on the title as well. Uh, a trailer like this has a GVWR of, for example, 7,000 pounds. This is a 20-foot trailer, and the gross vehicle weight rating is 7,000 pounds. That means that everything on the road, including the weight of the trailer, is not to exceed 7,000 pounds. So the, uh, the tractor behind me, which is a CK4020 with a KL4030 loader, I know that the tractor and the loader weigh 4,000 pounds. The uh, maximum weight on the ground of this trailer is 7,000 pounds, and the trailer weighs almost 1,800. We'll call it 1,800 pounds. So I have 5,200 pounds of payload to work with. That tractor weighs 4,000 pounds. I've got 5,200 to work with. I am golden. Can I take a rotary cutter? Well, all you have to do is uh, find out what the rotary cutter weighs. And uh, for example, the manufacturer's website uh, will, will certainly have that because it's important to know. If a uh, rotary cutter weighs 800 pounds, I'm at 4,800 pounds. I've got uh, 5,200 available, good to go. So the, uh, the load that you put on the trailer obviously, common sense, cannot exceed the capabilities of the trailer. The other number that you need to know is your tow vehicle. What can it tow? And it's available in the owner's manual or on the manufacturer's website or 
my goodness, you could ask Mr. Google, what will my, in this case, 2019 Ford Ranger crew cab 4x4 tow? And uh, I flipped open the owner's manual, and it says right there, 7,500 pounds if the trailer has brakes. This trailer does have brakes. Look at what it'll tow if it doesn't have brakes. Yeah, that should give you an indication of whether brakes are important or not on a trailer. Uh, the, the, you know, it'll pull next to nothing. So you need a trailer with brakes. I've pulled the, uh, I've, with the Ranger, I've pulled many times, 7,500, and, and truth be told, I've pulled much more than that, and I'm not suggesting you do that. But um, I, I do make sure that the, uh, the, the vehicle is in perfect condition uh, for example, it's got almost, no, oh no, it's over now. It's got 90,000 miles on it, and I tow a lot. And uh, at 50,000 miles, I, did, I had the Ford dealer do the 100,000 mile service because I wanted all the, all the fluids, the transmission, the axles. I wanted everything, uh, uh, you know, changed out and maintained. And, and uh, at 100, I'll, I'll do it again. So I know that my, my vehicle is in good shape, and I, I, with experience of towing a lot, I know what it likes and I know what it doesn't like. And, but that, you know, there'll be a bit of a learning curve. Let's start by uncoupling this, uh, this trailer and taking a look at the components of the trailer and of the tow vehicle and uh, how, they, how they mate. Before I uh, show you the different components, uh, I wanted to talk a minute about, uh, a minute more I should say, about brakes. Uh, we've established that your trailer needs to have brakes, but there's, uh, there's a couple more considerations. If, if your trailer has a thing right here that looks like a battery box, it looks like a battery box because it is a battery box. And this trailer, for example, has, uh, they're, they're known by ne many names, but a lot of people just call them breakaways. And what they are is they're a cable, a very thin cable, that you just snap somewhere on the tow vehicle and it has a emergency pull right here. And when it would be activated, if the trailer comes uncoupled and is no longer attached to the tow vehicle, the, uh, the emergency braking, this will pull the pin, the emergency braking will uh, apply the brakes on the trailer to hopefully keep it from passing you on the highway. Uh, your trailer may have them, your trailer may not have them, but if it has them, the, uh, the battery should be checked occasionally and, uh, you know, for charge. So this one does have that. The other thing is your tow vehicle needs to have a brake controller. And uh, brake controller, most, most modern trucks, it seems to me, have them on the dash. Um, and what it does is it, it, it either a sliding uh, spring activated knob or just a twist knob or any variety of different adjustments that you can fine tune how much braking pressure you want to uh, the, the, the trailer to apply when you put on the brakes. And that varies with every load because right now this trailer weighs only 1,800 pounds and I certainly don't need much. If there's too much braking actuate, actuating, uh, the brakes will lock up and smoke the tires and you know, you'll look silly. Uh, so I need very light assist on that. If this has the tractor and a, and a rotary cutter and I'm close to you know the total 7,000 pounds on the ground, I'm going to want more gain, more, uh, more trailer, uh, you know, braking. And uh, so that's, a, uh, that's another thing that you, it comes with, uh, with experience. Uh, as, as you first pull off with a trailer, You'll, you'll check your brakes, you'll see if your, your trailer is helping, you know, brake and, uh, and fine tune it. And you'll get used to it. It's, I'm, I'm probably making it more complicated than it seems, but trailer braking and a trailer braking module in the uh, tow vehicle are both necessary. Now, back to what I said. So, we're going to, uh, to look at the individual components of, of, of what a, you know, the coupler and the, what's on the tow vehicle and what's on the trailer. Hopefully your coupler is being, you know, emergency. <laughs> the, final, uh, the final defense is the safety pin. And when it is in there, depending, and, and really it doesn't matter what kind of trailer you have, 
there's always a one last thing that you can do, and in this case, it's a safety pin looking thing, and it absolutely keeps the, uh, the trailer from uncoupling. Um, so, take that off, take this off, slide it to the rear position. There's, there's some indents to hold it open. Now it is uncoupled. The uh, wires, this is a seven pin, and everything that you would pull a tractor with is going to be a seven pin, uh, as opposed to the five pin, which is the little bitty guy. The seven pin, this, this larger one, that also uh, has the brake controls on it. So that's why it's always gonna look like that. All right, so the, uh, another fail safe is a set of chains. They're required by law, and they're also required by common sense and they get connected to the tow vehicle in case, for whatever reason, the uh, trailer becomes uncoupled. So there's always two of those. This is that cable that uh, does the breakaway emergency braking, and that just needs to be attached to the tow vehicle. Okay, so this is uncoupled, and uh, I'll show you something kind of cool here. Always put a block under the screw down jack or else you're going to be turning forever and uh, that you know that becomes unfun in a hurry all right so yep when you hear that it is uncoupled you can put your hand in there and make sure that it's still higher than the ball it's not quite now it is and uh, we can take a look at what the truck has on it this is a two and a half inch receiver Trailer hitch receivers on tow vehicles come in uh, like one and a quarter inch. You know, that's not for these. Two and a half inch. And then big trucks like a Ford F450 or something might have one even bigger than that. It's like four inches. And you can put a sleeve in it for lighter loads like this. You'll need a uh, trailer insert, trailer hitch insert. In this case, I've got one that's adjustable up and down, and you'll notice it has two balls. One is the uh, two inch ball, which this trailer takes, and the other universal size is two and five sixteenths inch, which the heavier trailers take. So I can unpin this, flip it over, and the hitch will do either one of them. The, uh, this trailer hitch that came from the manufacturer also has slots here that are pre pre-made and they are for the uh, the emergency chains. This is very common for the uh, electrical connectors. This has two doors. One is for the five pin connector and you would see that like on a single axle lawnmower trailer that doesn't have brakes, just has lights and you know stuff like that. And then everything else uses the seven pin and so that's what that is. Um, some of these get expensive so Mine has a lock on it, I've learned with experience. Uh, this one's also made out of aluminum, which is very lightweight to, to fiddle with. But perhaps your trailer uh, is big and heavy and as is the load and, and you know, buying aluminum might not be for you. Buying aluminum works good for me because I, I don't tow more than you know, 10,000 pounds. Okay, now how do you know which size trailer ball your trailer wants to mate to. Well, it's always stamped right here on the tongue, but it could be wore out by, you know, by the time that you first look at it. This says two inch ball. And if you want to take a paint pen and write two inch ball, that way when your neighbor borrows your trailer, which he will, you can, uh, yeah, he'll know, he or she. And uh, what else does it say? Oh, it's made, yep, tongue's made in China. Uh, 1,200 uh, 1200 pound maximum tongue weight. Here, that's a good time to mention that. Um, the uh, tongue weight, the weight here, and of course that will vary just by how far you pull the uh, load forward on the trailer. The farther you pull up the tractor, the heavier this gets and the, you know, more back towards the end of the tractor or the trailer than the lighter it gets. It's important to load the tow vehicle. So you, you're gonna wanna put uh, as much weight as, as is recommended on the back of the tow vehicle because 
it needs to share in the work. The trailer doesn't need to do all the work. The trailer has tires that hit the ground, but also much of the load is carried right here on the tow vehicle. And uh, you'll, you'll notice if, if you've ever towed and the trailer, you look in your rear view and the trailer is, is gently fishtailing, not dangerous like, you're, you're, you know, we're all gonna die, but you'll notice it doing that. And that is a symptom of having the load too far back on the trailer. You'll need to stop what you're doing, pull over, and pull the load forward. And uh, that, will, that will undo that. Um, sorry about that. Okay. And how do you know where, you know, that sweet spot is? You, uh, you could weigh it and, you know, uh, there's, a, there's scales that will weigh the uh, trailer and how much is on each wheel. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is I would, I would stand back and I'd look at the truck and uh, the truck right now is not loaded and yeah, I could see where it is, it, you know, in, in the, you know, the, the uh, how high it sits up in the back end. And what I want is, as I said, for it to share some of the load. So when I pull the tractor on, it's going to sink some. I don't want it I don't want the back end lower than the front end, but I want it to, you know, obviously be working. And, uh, you know, that's something that after two or three times, you'll, you'll know exactly what's necessary. So let me uh, move the camera. We'll talk about some other stuff. Another word about wheel chocks. If you're on a slippery surface, if it's uh, uh, concrete and it's wet, or in this case, uh, this is a, uh, uh, one of those poly floors, uh, epoxy, I guess is the word, and it gets a little slick. So either change to rubber chocks or use uh, or chock all, all four wheels. I guess chocking all four wheels is probably the best idea. But here's another tip on chocking. Before you put the load onto the tractor, set your wheel chocks and run your tow vehicle up against them. Get them nice and snug. And let me do that real quick. Okay, those chocks are tight. It'll lessen the chance that uh, you'll be adding additional strain to the tow vehicle, to the parking pin, or to the emergency brake. Here's another thing. If you're loading on a hill, which please don't ever do, but if you're loading on a hill, trailer, tow vehicle. As you're loading, the, uh, the trailer comes up. Well, then so does the tow vehicle. And what does the tow vehicle have right here, but two tires, and that's where the parking brake sets. So conceivably, and I've done it, you could lift the tow vehicle up enough to where it loses the, uh, the parking brake's traction, and you could push the whole load forward. That's an adventurous ride, so don't do that. Just, just park on, uh, find somewhere flat, even if you have to drive the tractor to it. So, all right, so I'd like to show you three ways that I'm, I can pull this tractor onto that trailer in increasingly uh, better ways. I'll start with something that uh, even though I do, you shouldn't do, and then the, uh, the way that it's designed and then the way that it's designed plus a tip. So let's do that. This trailer has a dovetail rear, so about the last 24 inches are sloped down at, I don't know, 25 degrees. And uh, it aids in loading because it, it uh, makes the ramps that are needed much shorter. And in this case, and this is not the way you should do it, I'm gonna load the tractor without using the ramps at all. And uh, take a look at the front of the trailer, back of the truck, and see the, uh, the amount of rise that the truck experiences. And I don't know, I just want to let you know that doesn't hurt the truck. The, uh, the bumper, it's not, I'm not towing off the bumper, I'm towing off of, no, Anthony, come by, wave at the folks. That's Anthony. Um, the hitch is an integral part of the truck's frame. So no, no different than a shop 
lifting the truck up by the frame. So anyway. I'm in four wheel drive. One other thing to consider is the lower link ends. Pick the three point up or else when the tractor inclines, it'll drag the ground. I'm in four wheel drive so that I can get some traction onto that ramp when I get there. I put the front tires up against the trailer and while I slowly move forward, I push down on the trailer, which also makes up for the tractor using the front end loader. Okay, that was no ramps at all. One other thing that I'd like to point out as long as I'm sitting here, uh, if possible, like right now I don't have anything in front of the bucket, I'm not carrying anything else, turn the bucket in such a way that it's not such a complete wind catcher. The aerodynamics uh, would be vastly improved if the, if the bucket was turned thusly. Okay, when I take the tractor off, again, the wheel chocks are going to hold the load from scooting forward. I don't need the bucket this time, and it's going to make a little noise. Alright, I'm going to pull out the ramps and do it the correct way and then I'll show you one more way that's a combination of correct and help, helpful hint of the day. Alright, typically the ramps will have a edge on it like that which tells you that it goes into this lip. I'm pretty good at knowing how wide a CK 10 series tractor is. So, but un until you are, wait a minute, Siri's talking to me. Until you are, you know, fiddle with it until they, uh, they match up with the front tires. That's with the ramps. Alright, you noticed that the trailer still squatted 
way down in the back, bringing the truck way up in the front. And if that, uh, if that doesn't, I don't know, trip your trigger, and you would like an even more smooth tra uh, trans transaction, trans, I don't know, if you'd like it to go smoother, take trusty chocks and chock the back of the trailer to a certain level that it then can't go any lower. That's my helpful hint of the day. Let's look at that. Anyway, with a dovetail and a uh, compact tractor, you saw me do it with, uh, without ramps, with ramps, and then with ramps and a chock. And it, it would have been more dramatic if I would have used a bigger chock, the trailer wouldn't have sank at all and the uh, Ranger wouldn't have lifted at all. That's pulling onto a uh, trailer. All right, you've got the tractor on the trailer it's positioned where you like it. The, uh, the, the truck that you're pulling it with is bearing a considerable amount of the weight. And now it's time for retention to keep the machine strapped to the trailer. There's uh, a few different items you can use for that. And uh, one is a strap, a ratchet strap. And, and some people, and I'm sure I'll get comments, that uh, these are the devil and you know they're dangerous. They're not, and, uh, and I use them. I use them in conjunction with chains. This one is rated at 3,333 pounds, and that's, that's good for half of the tractor. The other is certainly chain, uh, not just logging chain, but there's a specific chain. It's called grade 70, and grade 70 chain, which this is, is rated for uh, trailer and highway use. It's, uh, it's very strong. And then to keep the chain in place, you would need a binder. This type of binder is uh, kind of old school. This is what people used back in the day. And uh, they've fallen out of favor, and probably for good reason. Um, the, the fear on these is always that they will open. But you may find yourself only having these available, and you know I'll touch on that when I when I chain this down. The best chain binder is a ratchet binder, and just what it sounds like, literally, it uh, it ratchets down. One more thing that is very important, and what did I do with it? Oh, here it is. You need a clevis. A clevis fits nicely right on the draw bar of the tractor and is the best place and the easiest place to strap down your tractor. So invest a few dollars, get a clevis, screw it into place, and uh, it's a wonderful thing to use to uh, send the chain or the, or the uh, strap through. Straps, I said they, they you know, they, they get a bad reputation sometimes. And I, I, can, I can almost guarantee you any strap failures that people have had were because the straps themselves needed to be replaced. Unlike a grade 70 chain, a strap will wear out. Leaving it in the back of your truck, getting rained on, getting dried, rain dry, rain dry, UV, and the biggest nemesis to a strap, uh, sharp angles. If you were strapping down this tractor and you put the uh, strap against a uh, 90 degree angle of steel, 
it's going to wear. So that's another reason I really like these. So let's try using the chain first. I always like, if possible, to send it down the pocket, back up and around, and hook it in place. That way when you walk to the other side of the tractor, it doesn't fall free and, you know, since you're only one person trying to do something eight feet apart, it's a little tough sometimes. Um, hopefully you have a clevis because you see how handy these are and you send it through the clevis. And I'll meet you over there. Now, most chains come in 20 feet lengths when you buy them. I've seen them even in 30. And uh, it's almost unmanageable, and, and, and they're very heavy. So I like to cut, cut mine to about 10 feet. In fact, if you buy a 20-foot chain and an extra hook, you can get two chains. So this is a 10-foot chain. It only has a hook on one side because I don't need it on this side because I'm going to use a binder. So again, I go through the through the stake pocket and I have about that much left over. If I was using this thing, let's see if I can do it quickly like I really know what I'm doing. Find a couple of good, good parts and uh, yep, that was, that was closed. There we go. That's a little bit too much, so you go down a link, find another one, and you close it. That's a very good connection, very strong, but if you're forced to use one of these, you know, not a whole lot of effort it takes to open it. So it's a good idea to use some, uh, you know, but, uh, straps like this and, and keep it closed. The best idea is not to use them, but you notice I have a set. People that work here steal my, my straps, binders, and chains out of the back of my truck, and sometimes they even replace them with something like this, which, you know, that's really nice. Okay, so that is the lever binder. This is a ratchet binder. Again, roll it by hand until it's tight. All right, and that is a ratchet binder. Excellent way to do it. Plus, um, as you move the uh, trailer along the road, you'll notice that everything loosens up just a bit. And that's why in about 50 miles or even less, you need to stop and uh, wiggle everything and see if it's still tight. The tractor will still move an inch or so, and this gives you a good chance to snug up on everything. So, let's take a look at the front end. All right, as I said before, you're looking for a place on the tractor that you won't injure the tractor, you won't injure the chains or the uh, straps, and it'll, re it, it'll offer maximum retention. I've tried everywhere. My favorite is right through this tube that's in the cross member of the front end loader. And I like to send the chain right through that. And how do I do that? Well, this uh, ramrod here harkens back to the days of the War of Northern Aggression. To cool the cannons. So I just uh, take it and shove it on through. Keep a broomstick in the truck. So I put, put this one through and, and hook it. And then I'll come around
I also like to put an insulator on these because uh, I mean it's not like it's a Mahindra. This is a nice tractor and it should be protected. Again with uh, cardboard <laughs> cut up Kubota brochure. I'll get it out. All right, so you got that. Now notice this isn't long enough to send up and around. That's perfectly fine because this bad boy right here will do all the reaching that you need. Hook it into place. Get a fairly close by tooth and away we go. Pull my little piece of cardboard out a bit. There we go. Okay. That is a perfectly chained down front end loader. That won't go anywhere. All right. The, uh, the best I can, advice that I can give from here is to practice. Know what it feels like if you've never towed or you've never towed anything heavy, know what it feels like. Find a, you know, find a big parking lot, go to a, uh, you know, a Walmart at, in the morning or, you know, somewhere and, uh, and practice with it. And then try it around a subdivision because you'll see that the turns need to be taken a little wider, not much wider, it's not crazy, but a little wider. The braking will be different, the acceleration will be different. And if your truck your tow vehicle has a tow haul mode, and most, most of them do. Um, mine's on the console. I think GM puts them up on the gear shift. Push it. And what that does is whether, whether you have a four-speed automatic or, uh, or even a 10-speed automatic, mine has a 10-speed automatic, it in, when you're accelerating, it makes the truck rev up higher before it shifts, and that just is uh, easier on the truck and easier on the transmission. It's, uh, it's letting the engine do all the work, not uh, struggling to, uh, to maintain RPM. So it'll shift at a higher rate. When you decelerate, when you touch your brakes and you're in the tow haul mode, your tow vehicle will automatically downshift for you. And uh, that's, that's good braking right there. That is uh, not having to rely on the brakes of the trailer and the truck 100%, it slows it down with engine RPM, with engine resistance. The other thing is when you're coming down long grades, resist the urge to, uh, to, to gently break all the way down the hill. It's better to a uh, little harder break, let off, a little harder break, let off. Uh, your, your high school physics teacher would explain that the way braking works is you're turning one en energy into another. The energy of motion through friction causes heat and heat dissipation. So you're turning motion into heat and it dissipates off. That's, that's what brakes do is by use of friction they, they uh, generate heat and then the heat is, uh, is blown away. But if the brakes get too hot, they cannot do that function. So uh, try to keep the brakes cool by using them slightly more aggressively and less often if you're on a long grade. And certainly downshift the truck manually if that helps. The other thing is take one last look at what, you're, what you've got. Make sure everything is secure. Let me give you a little, little tip. For reasons I don't understand, the uh, CK tractors, check this out. Now, I guess that's nice, but it's not nice when it flies off on the highway. Now, uh, I haven't seen a, a whole lot of doing that, but if we delivered your tractor, and you may not even have noticed this, we carry these separate and put it in at the end. Um, just seems kind of weird. The other thing is a canopy, regardless of the fact that we told you that the canopy is highway rated, why chance it? Throw one of those cheap little one inch straps over the top of the canopy because uh, at 70 miles an hour, that's quite a bit of wind resistance and it's not a bad idea. You also, every implement that you're carrying, 
uh, make sure it has its own retention. It's, uh, I showed you that, you know, we, shut, we, we put the buckets down on implements and that gives a pretty good squish, but it should also be strapped. Lastly, and I hope this is lastly, hook your truck up and run a light check. You know, if you're by yourself, so be it. Do it. Uh, check the left blinker or the right blinker. Put a stick on the uh, brakes and make sure you have brake lights, things like that. And then pull away where there's a big safe area and put on the brakes. You'll feel the difference if the, track, if the trailer brakes are helping or not. If they're not helping, increase the gain on your little box on the dash. If it's helping too much, you can look in your rear view and you literally will see smoke coming out of the tires because they're skidding, lighten up on it. You'll get the feeling. You want it to help, but not overpower. The, the truck is still the main, uh, main way to brake. The, through the brakes and the transmission downshifting. But these need to be adjusted properly. And you'll get the hang of that. I, I, I can do it on the way out of the parking lot here at work. I can, I can adjust my gain and you know, be righteous with it. This is the last thing. Uh, drive a short period, 10, 20, whatever miles, and uh, pull off to get a soda or gas or whatever. But do it and tighten your straps. They will have loosened. Even chains will have loosened because the tractor nestled into its comfortable place. Now you need to strap every, you need to uh, tighten all the straps, and it gives you one last chance to just look at everything. And don't be scared; it's there's a learning curve, um, but I don't believe it's a dangerous curve. If you have a good tow vehicle, a good trailer, good retention, and a little bit of practice, I can't imagine anybody really having trouble on a on a 20 foot trailer. That's the end of this long video. I appreciate you watching. And uh, if you have any questions, if, um, you know, if you're picking your, your tractor up from us, let us strap it down. If you're not comfortable, let us do it. And, uh, and you know, and ask questions and watch and stuff like that. We've, we've done, you know, several thousand of them. And, and, you know, we get good at it after a while. But uh, that's it. If you have any questions or whatever, call us. 615-956-0334 or drop us an email sales at lsetractor.com sales at lsetractor.com check out our website we got all kind of pick three pick five deals uh zero percent financing uh, like crazy on the coyotes and and the, the zero turn mowers and the stand-up mowers check out our website it's uh www of course lse tractor.com. LSE, like Larry, Stove Sand Equipment, tractor.com. Thank you, and I hope this helps.